Then we're regular school board meeting on the uh, 16th of May. So what I'd like to see is that we need to have the meeting agenda approved as presented. I'll make a motion to approve the meeting agenda as approved for the date. I second that. So we have a motion and a second for the approval of the agenda as presented. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all. Okay. Actually, we've got a several presentations. We have a special one. We have a guest today. Uh, our mayor, Michael Harris, called me and had discovered a document. It looks like it's framed. And so, Mike, if you would, if you'll come up and take center stage. Approach the bench. Approach the bench, I guess. If you want to look at that. Tell I having a client clean out some of their older artifacts and came across a diploma of Mr. Robert Earl Kochenauer. I knew, I knew Mr. Kochenauer, but this is his father. Mm. And it's a graduate of Danville High School, May 1925. And two of the four, uh, one, of the, one of the superintendents was Mr. Uh, Mr. Bosley. Mm -hmm. Right behind you. One of the pictures. And another one. <laughs> hey, hey, <laughs> a classmate of mine right here. Another one was, uh, yeah, same. Uh, he also served as secretary. So that's obviously a, a long standing name in the community. And I thought, well, that doesn't need to get tossed around. Nobody else would like to have it. So I will uh, Let me come around gladly that give it to you, you sir. Well, and I apologize. I didn't realize this was broken, but you can see this. There's some age to the old thing, and I don't know if you want to get. That's all right, Mayor. Or... I'm old and broken myself, so this is this is fantastic. And thank you for this. We will find a space for this here in this building. And I just thought it was cool that you called because we don't always come across these. And this is when a diploma was a diploma. Right. And we can pass this around if you all want to take a look at it. Thank you. Two points of executive privilege, please. One is uh, the old uh, superintendent's house. I hope you all will consider doing something with that meaningful before it degrades any further. That's one. And if somebody who likes to uh, see old homes restored, and that'd be a great thing. That is, that is a wonderful piece. Is the city willing to uh, put some money for it to help with that? <laughs> help with the restoration? He got all her money in Jenny Rogers. <laughs> yes, we did. Thank you. You're welcome. Which, by the way, is is going along very well, very well. Um, secondly, um, there's a massive disconnect going on in this country, and it has to do with education. You're finding that uh, first-year uh, commercial truck drivers are making more money first year than most Ph.D. candidates are. Mm. Uh, welders, the same way. Mm. And we have this marvelous facility out here called the Bluegrass Community and Technical College System. <coughs> And um, when I was in school, um, there was a group of kids that got bused to Garrett County for vocational school. Um, there's somehow not only a disconnect nationally with that, I think we got a disconnect locally because the folks of BCPT say that they can't really get the attention, anybody's attention, in, in Danville schools. Um, and I think that's unfortunate because if we're here to not only educate kids, but we've got to be here to to make a Bible so they make a living. Not everybody goes to college just making a living. And so I would I would ask that you all as a board consider um, having a direct connection, conversation with the folks at BCPC. Because how many of you have tried to get a plumber? How many of you tried to get a PhD person? All these kind of things. <laughs> Try to get a PhD to go up on a roof and put put new shingles down. Not going to happen. So. Anyway, that's my story. 
I'm sticking to it, and I thank you all. Thank you, man. I will do it. Thank you very much. Thank you. One thing Michael and I have very much in common is we're never short on words. But Mike's a graduate and, and has a lot of wise things to say. So thank you again. You weren't going to say that unless I stood back there. Oh, oh yeah, I knew, I knew that. <laughs> I knew that. Okay, next on the agenda will be board member comments. Well, my only comment was I really appreciate all the um, information that you provided at the last board meeting. It was very informative. Um, I took a lot of notes um, after re-watching the video, or watching the video, so just FYI, I, I really appreciate everything and all the effort you put into it. Glenn, Jennifer? I just want to... Uh, just want to let all the teachers and staff know that we're with you. We're thinking about you these last couple weeks of school, and it's awful. It's often a little bit uh, crazy. So um, we're here for you. Let us know if there's anything else we can do to support you. Where's Miss Fawn? She's here. She's here somewhere. You enjoy the donuts? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we do. Yeah, and the same sentiment I know is from all the board members concerning our staff. And, folks that have been with us uh, either just a year or folks that have been with us for 30 years or longer. So um, I did have the pleasure last week to attend the uh, Arts Commission Arts Festival at Pioneer Playhouse. You got to see most of the school's uh, artwork and also perform. It was all well done and it was unique to see them up on a strange stage and the teachers working well with all the kids and it, it was uh, very uplifting for me to know that our arts are in a wonderful situation and, and it's going to get nothing but better. So thanks to all the teachers that were involved in that, parents, and, uh, and especially the kids. Because if you tell them to go dance, they'll go dance. Or you want to tell them to sing and they will sing. So it's, it, it was pretty amazing. So thanks for all that. All right. Let's go down to the superintendent comments, please. Thank you. I just have three brief comments. First of all, I'm excited about May 27th. We'll have about 115 graduates from Danville High School walk the stage uh, a couple of Friday, a little bit over a week, week and a half from now on that May 27th Friday night, one of which will be my nephew. I know uh, I'm excited. He is attending BCTC, so that's a connection to Danville Schools. And uh, so I'll give a shout out to Andre whenever he watches this video at the board meeting. <laughs> Thank you for appreciating that humor. <laughs> Second thing that I want to say is uh, congratulations to Miss Michelle Carver. She's our new principal at J.W. Bate Middle School, so we're excited about Miss Carver moving up. <laughs> it's a, a really new day for Danville Schools, and looking forward to everything that's happening with our new staff coming on and so forth. And then the uh, last thing that I want to comment, let the board be aware of, is we continue to have our application for non-resident students. We've had uh, close to maybe 10 students since we've opened that a couple of weeks ago. We've had uh, 10 students from Boyle, from Lincoln, uh, and maybe even a student or two from Mercer County who are on the list to join Danville Independent Schools next uh, year. So I encourage anybody, uh, if you know someone from out of district who's uh, wanting to attend Danville Independent Schools, go ahead and get on the list. They can do that on our website. Thank you, and that concludes my comments. Excellent. Thank you, Superintendent. Greatly appreciate it. Let's move down to uh, item number 3D. So we have several retirements, and we are sad to see you guys leave us. But I know how it is and how it feels to retire. It's, it's all good. So who's going to leave? We can we can turn it over to Miss Kelly. Perhaps I think she has at least two retirees. Yeah. Yes, three. 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 Well, actually, I'll take credit for this one. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start with Debbie Deshawn. Uh, Debbie is retiring from Bate Middle School, but I worked with Debbie for many years at Jenny Rogers. Um, <laughs> if she had a nickel for every time she said. Y'all want some more? Oh, y'all want some more with that? She would, her retirement would be a lot better if she had a new career for years. Obviously, she fed us well and served us for many years. Um, Debbie has the most school spirit of anyone. If we had a dress up day or a 50s day, she would come in the full garb, head to toe, always supporting all of those extracurriculars, which the little ones absolutely love. So um, I do appreciate 
all of your time and your years of service to the English Thank you. Thank you, And I also have to recognize tonight Ms. Michelle Lynch. <clears throat> Ms. Lynch has been with the Damel Schools for five years. She worked at Hodgson, oh no, no, Damel High School, Bay, and at Tolliver. Oh. All right. Uh, Michelle's been in some custodial departments. She's also working in the cafeteria with us yeah. right now. And she's also known around our parts as Little Bit. I don't, in case y'all didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> little Bit does lots of things. <laughs> little Bit is um, very involved with all of our students. She's out in the dining room with the kids. And uh, if she had a nickel for every time she said, um, do you need some ketchup? <laughs> she, her retirement would be a lot better too. So I also want to thank you, Michelle, for all of your service to the English schools in all of the areas. Because you've helped me out a lot. She also substitutes for me sometimes in the evening. So I appreciate that. When I see Miss Kelly run, I, I, kind of, I run the other way. <laughs> <laughs> She's a lot faster than me. Okay? <laughs> thank you. And next, I want to recognize Mr. John Irwin. John has been a teacher for 35 years. Woo -hoo, woo -hoo. When I was a young teacher, John was the writing cluster leader. We were there. I remember calling John more than once, panicked about discrepancy and portfolio scores and how to help. And John had a lot of roles in leadership um, in lots of areas within um, the Naval Schools. I know you were a fourth and fifth grade teacher. Did you teach other grades? Second and third. Second and third. Second and third, fourth and fifth. So you've done a lot of that. Um, you were a computer lab teacher. Mm -hmm. You've been a virtual teacher. Mm -hmm. And you've been an academic team coach. He's done well, you all. He has served us well in many of those areas. Been very successful as an academic team coach. I mean, he has lots of championships and about those trophies in the case. I'm sure have your name written on. So thank you so much for all of your service to the Dance Schools. I appreciate all you've done and wish you so much. Luck. recognizing Miss Tina Ray. She retired in January um, from our director of special ed position. So um, oh, we don't have enough time to talk about Tina Ray. Dr. Thomas is probably going to get a shepherd's hook out on me, but um, Tina came to the Danville schools, and I know this for a fact, in 2011 because she took the director of special ed job when I took the Bate Middle School counselor's job, and we were at a welcome meet and greet together, and we both felt like fish out of water in a room of a bunch of people who had been in these roles for several years. Um, but Tina, hmm, Tina, I have never in my life seen anybody so torn about retirement. And I think anybody who talked to her about retirement could attest to that. She loved what she did. She loved all students, not just special education students. And what's so important about Tina Tina always knew that they were all general education students first. Um, their IEP did not define them, nor did it make them what they were. Um, she, I wish she was here so I could hug her, but I'm kind of glad she's not because if she was here I would cry. Um, but she, um, for me, I'll just end with this, she always reminded me not to live the job and that if you weren't taking care of yourself first, you couldn't take care of anybody else. So. Um, Congratulations, Tina. We love you and we miss you dearly. Thanks, Mr. Billy. Mr. Billy Kurtz.
Ritzinger. Um, he came to the Danville schools in 2010, the same year I did, and we both actually worked together at Tolliver, um, up on the third floor when uh, before the renovation, and then um, when we uh, consolidated the schools and changed things up, we were lucky to get in that Hogsett. So I've known Billy quite a long time, but I asked some people for some words and the things they said. Right? Generous, calm, kind, friendly, accepting, patient, hardworking, conscientious, knowledgeable, efficient, helpful, positive, caring, nice, compassionate, dependable, wise, humble, <coughs> loyal, smiling, face, selfless, passionate, dedicated, and empathetic. The best custodian ever, puts kids first, does anything for students and staff, a friend, helps everyone start their day on the right foot, a treasure, touched so many lives, he's loved, great attitude, stocks everything to help. He's also a bug catcher and a critter ritter. Um, <laughs> he's um, made a particular impact on one student that was at Tolliver. I think most people in this room may remember him. Um, and this student really admired Mr. Billy, followed him around, and Mr. Billy would let him help him with cleaning tasks and bought him keys and um, really made an impact on that, that child's life. Um, he's really become a part of our school community. When we have birthday parties or holidays, the kids invite Mr. Billy. Um, write him thank you notes. Um, and um, he's just really made a positive difference in everyone's lives. Um, so this isn't the end of your retirement celebration at Hogsett, but this is just the beginning. And um, thank you again. and a lot of people may not even know who Melanie is because she's currently out at Sunrise. She's our middle grade teacher out at Sunrise Children's Campus. But Melanie, Robin, you might be able to chime in on this one too because you worked with her at Bait too. Melanie is one of a kind. One of a kind, that's a good way to put it. Melanie is one of a kind. You won't find a personality like hers. You won't find somebody who cares more about people and more about kids outside of her own children. I cannot count how many children she has raised in her home outside of the ones that were her biological children. She is an amazing person. She will do whatever she needs to do. Um, she keeps everything. If you ever need anything and you can't remember what it was from 10 years ago, you just go find Melanie and she can find it. She is wonderful um, and she loves kids. So she couldn't be with us tonight, but congratulations to Melanie Crow. Congratulations to all. <coughs> all will be definitely nice. Okay, next we have the um, personnel notifications. Uh, I hope the board's looking at all that. And if you have any questions uh, or concerns, whatever, just get a hold of the superintendent and uh, he'll clue you in on whatever he can. Okay, item 3F is our facilities update. Mr. Dunn. <coughs> Uh, I'll start off about with uh, Anchor Plaza. I think uh, I got the quote in from Dawson Morkey and it came in. And, uh, $58,980, and that was uh, quite a bit more than what we had budgeted for and planned on. Um, and talking to Justin, it was a, um, he tried to cut costs and take out things that to eliminate, you know, some of the cost on it, but it was going to be just because of the cost of materials is so high that he, it's just, he did all he could. So, um, he said the pipe bollards and the signs that we, uh, that we uh, had, were, had designed were quite a much, added a great deal of cost to it. And, uh, to talk to him and see what we can do or, I want to check with the board and see what the next steps were and making another decision. I'd like to put some guidance on how 
we should proceed on that. Okay. When we initially started with Anchor Plaza, we were hoping for, and I think fairly, guide, fairly well guided that this would be about a twenty-five thousand dollar total project, which kept us in a minor, a minor category with KDE facilities. And with this price, it'll put us into a major category. And, it, and a major category typically means it needs to be on the facilities plan. We do have some leeway. We're going to uh, we're going to look at the uh, uh, I the house bill might be six seventy eight. Six seventy eight. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna make a proclamation that gives us a little bit of flexibility to make decisions to do projects like that. But with a substantial cost increase, then uh, it's probably going to be something that we're going to have to discuss a little bit further with the board as we move forward with the project. Wonderful project, well planned. It's just, uh, I think, the extreme expense of things and how quickly that has escalated in months uh, has really uh, uh, borne the brunt of this. And I know that we've, we've talked about sending out some bids on that as well to see if we can get different pricing along the way. But even with the amount that Mr. Dunn presents, there's still other work to be done to complete that project, such as electric for lighting, to have the lights around there, the benches, which we can get those and we can install those pretty easily, but there'll be some additional site work that will have to take place. Uh, uh, to continue on with Anchor Plaza, I think it's a wonderful space for our kids. We plan on using ESSER funding for that for um, outdoor classroom space. So uh, just uh, one thing before we know about that cost that has come in and uh, seek some direction from the board, whether tonight or, or as we move forward. Yes. Then uh, update on the bait age back, uh, finishing up phase <coughs> two of that process. Uh, get the quotes in from thermal equipment sales and CPS for the uh, phase two. Uh, from thermal equipment, it's uh, $33,000. And from the comfort process and solution, it was came in at $440,908. Um, Lead time on the thermal equipment sales, part of it is the uh, VAB boxes. That's uh, seven, eight weeks, and they can get that, they can do that work on nights and weekends so that they don't uh, disrupt the school day or anybody in the field. So, so now how much was comfort to their, their bid? Uh, 440908 dollars And the other bid was? Thirty-three thousand. These both go together. They're okay. They're the same part of the same. Yeah. yeah, we've already got. Uh, that includes the labor to install all of the. Uh, I guess the uh, building the building control units and all the other parts that go with the HVAC system that we've already purchased. So let me ask you this, Mr. Dunn, on comfort level. <clears throat> there's still <coughs> seven to eight weeks just to get in certain parts, correct? Yes. So are, are we comfortable that they can start, as soon as those things hit, that they can jump in and start on that project? Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. we, we've, yes. Been, we've been waiting a long time for this to happen. Um, so nights and weekends, and so they're willing to do that. Yes. And. Uh, part of the reason we waited is I didn't know what where we were in the process of it. I, I was under the impression we had to redo another PG1 and there'd be a lot more that goes into it. So one side <coughs> was able to talk to uh, some of the representatives from CBS and he clued me into we'd already purchased a lot of the equipment that we needed. We just needed to install it. Right. Set that up, and we, you know, we are able to move along in the process a lot faster. Well, I'm, I was anticipating. Yeah, I'm. I'm really glad to hear this. Uh, um, it, it's just, it's just taken a long time, and you know, we're we're here for our kids yes. and our staff. And then when you get calls and it says, you know, this part of the building's not even air conditioned; it's 106 degrees in the room, or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know that that being that uncomfortable does not help learning. Yes. So, and I, I just really hope that you truly tell these folks that we got to get on a priority here. Let, let's get this project moving. They they were very much aware of 
our situation and when I talk to them, so they 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 want to get it done too. So. Hang on just a second. Does anybody else have any comments about Anchor Plaza at this point? <clears throat> so, Dr. Uh, Thomas, what do you think the uh, <coughs> estimated wise between you two guys, what, what may be the final cost? Well, we already have uh, perhaps $6,000 into the project um, with, um, with our architectural work and with some of the sandblasting that's going on. Um, you know, I probably, who knows on that electric, it pro to me it seems like a pretty simple process to get the lighting there and, and so it shouldn't be much. Uh, benches we can order and, and, uh, and our own crew can put those in, so I think that's real minimal. Uh, I would probably at this time send it out for a couple more bids and, and using the specs that our architect has done on that and see if we can get that at a, at a lesser amount and uh, be very time restrictive on that. You know, we thought we were going to have this in place in March and we're discussing it in May and we're hopeful to have something for an unveiling at the beginning of July or perhaps have a gathering at the beginning of the next school year. I do think once we decide to move forward, if we get the schedules right, we can move very quickly on that <laughs> and then allow our students to get to paint that. So uh, I wouldn't think at this point it's going to go much higher than perhaps 65000 but that's pretty substantial. I'd still like to see, and that includes, like we talked about the concrete, we're, losing, we're not losing grade of concrete, but like the stamping, that won't be a part of it because they're afraid that that would crack in that process. So uh, basically it's filling that hole full of concrete to hold that anchor up. So uh, uh, I would think 65,000 would probably do that with the goal of sending this out for a very quick two to three week bid process to turn around and uh, see if we get a few lower prices out there. And certainly Mr. Dunn doesn't care to call any contacts that we have to see if they can do it from that aspect as well. I, I just want everybody to understand about this concrete. It has to hold an 11,000 pound, 14,000 14, pound anchor. So it's not going to lay down. We're actually going to have it stand it's gonna up. up. It's going to stand up like it would be sitting at the bottom, bottom of the ocean. So, so and that reinforced concrete my son just ordered 100,000 yards for a hotel they're building, and he says it's extraordinary how much it costs now. And that concrete particularly is even more. Yeah, um, this, is, yeah this is not a sidewalk. In fact, the hole that the concrete will go in is as deep as the anchor itself above ground so that it makes certain that it, that it holds there. So, substantial amount. It's going to be a wonderful, beautiful gathering place for our students and for, I think, our community as well. So, I mean, we will discuss this further as a board. We're not making decisions today, right? Well, I mean, I, I would like for us to move forward with, with the new bids. Yes. And then we make a decision. Next. So if we can get that in in the next three weeks or so, that's praying we're going to get those in in three weeks. Um, I think then, once we get our house bill, once the board, once we get our resolutions, yeah, then we're able. Then we have a lot more freedom to do stuff like that. Right, right. So, but yes, we can do that in the next two to three weeks, and perhaps just calling people we know may even speed that up in the next week. Okay, Mr. Dunn, thank you for all your work. Greatly appreciate it. All right, we need to move to number four, which is the approval of the previous minutes. Need a motion, I have a motion to approve the uh, meeting minutes of previous meetings as presented. Second. So we have a motion and a second for the approval of previous previous meeting minutes, March the 14th, April the 25th, and May the 9th. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed. Motion carries. Okay. Well, uh, item number five is. Reserved for the public, and we have one Miss Susan Weston that has signed up. Um, we didn't see the list when we came in. Just it was up on the, it was on the podium. On the podium. It was on the podium. Till six, it's only up there till six. Were y'all here? Oh, well, okay, we were at the reception. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Susan, the floor is yours. Hello again, I'm here in my 
air quality and COVID Lorax role uh, to urge again that as a community, especially as a school board, we, we start a conversation and start working on the quality of the air in all of our facilities. As an example, I brought my CO2 monitor this evening. Standard advice before COVID was you don't want to be above a thousand parts per million. We're at 1100. So we're more than 100 over that in this room, not full yet. With COVID, the CDC is saying look for 800. And we're well above that right now. So we're at added risk compared to being outdoors. The idea of air quality is how close can we get to it being safe like outdoors. And we're on a start. So I wanted to give you an alert. Also how easy it is to walk around with a monitor. This is a $200 object. It's not a whimsical purchase. But it's workable. If we can get our air quality to be great in our schools, it'll be safer for our staff, it'll be safer for our kids, and especially it'll be safer for family members who might have extra vulnerability, like kids who live with grandparents, people who have relatives with lupus or in cancer treatment. That's what I'm here to advocate for, that we become leaders in the state on, yeah, we can say the air in our buildings is clean, it'll keep kids in school, and it'll keep us from having to talk about masks, except if you're hyper like me. And I know we'd all rather not do masks. So that's what I'm here to advocate again. I will be sending you the graph this produced is in a little bit, and I will tell you this is better than the city hall, Room for the commission, this is better than the fiscal court, and this is better than Danville Presbyterian Church during worship. But <coughs> This work is more important than two out of three of us. So I hope I hope we can build that up. And I'm planning to be really cheerful while being tenacious <laughs> at coming and bringing this up in different ways at more meetings. Thank you, Susan. You say we're better than churches? <laughs> <laughs> Only one. And it wasn't as full as it ought to be. Well, you, you did full of hot air. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. West. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go down to the House bills. 678 resolution. Dr. Thomas, will you do a summary of this? Uh, do you mind if I read the resolution? Oh, that way we can act on it. So the House uh, Bill 678, this is a re resolution of the Danville Independent School District Board of Education, electing co to conduct its facilities related projects and affairs under the provisions of House Bill 678 enacted during the 2022 regular session of the Kentucky General Assembly. <coughs> Whereas on April 8, 2022, Governor Andy Bashir signed 2022 regular session House Bill 678. Here and after House Bill 678 into law, making it effective immediately at that time pursuant to the emergency clause in Section 8 of the bill. And whereas House Bill 678 provides great flexibilities to local boards of education relating to the funding, financing, design, construction, renovation, or modification of the district's facilities and other facilities related matters, notwithstanding certain requirements for obtaining the prior approval of the Kentucky Department of Education or the Kentucky Board of Education as stated in various statutes and administrative regulations, and whereas the provisions of House Bill 678 generally apply from April 8, 2022 until June 30, 2024, and also apply retroactively to submissions and requests that have been made by local boards prior to the effective date of the Act, but that have not yet received approval from the appropriate board or official, and whereas House Bill 678 requires a local board that elects to conduct its projects under the provisions of the bill to adopt a resolution by majority vote and submit the resolution to the Kentucky Department of Education as noticed, now therefore be it resolved by the Danville Independent School District Board of Education hopefully on a motion by one of you, seconded by one of you, the board resolves the following. By majority vote, the board has elected to conduct its projects under the provisions of House Bill 678, and this resolution is being submitted by the Kentucky Department of Education as notice of this action. Approved and adopted on the 16th of May of 2022, if you so choose. And what that resolution will allow us to do is, in essence, will be still required to submit any of our facilities planning, just like the uh, Anchor Plaza to the Kentucky Department of Education. We'll submit that as a BG1. We'll submit that through our fact pack process, as we always do. But at that point, then it gives us flexibility and the speed to move as we see fit, that we don't have to wait for those stages for the Kentucky Department of Education facilities planning to come in and to double check all of the work that we've done. We're still going to use our architect as as uh, we are required to do. 
we're still going to do those projects based on what the architect says to do. So those will be backed by the Kentucky Department of Education, uh, but it will actually allow us to move a little more expediently and perhaps have some flexibility in things like bidding the process, timelines on that, and then choosing the workers to or the companies to do that work. I think it's excellent. And one thing the General Assembly really did that was positive for school districts. Um, so we're not cutting process and we're not cutting corners. It's all being done like it's supposed to be, except we don't have to wait for the six weeks for KDE for approvals and different things that just delay projects. Streamline the process. Yeah. yeah so, so it's a red paint cutting procedure that I think the boards and so far, and I, I'm going off the top of my head, I think 25 boards of education have gone ahead and taken advantage of that. We only know it because they have to, we would have to submit this as well. Right. And so I, I know that as we get closer to May and June, you'll start seeing more boards of education taking advantage of this as well. Does anybody have any questions concerning the resolution? Yeah, so we need a motion. We need a motion, please. Yeah, I make a motion to approve the resolution electing and facilities related projects and affairs under the provision of House Bill 670. Second. So we have a motion and a second to approve the House Bill 678 resolution as presented. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you, Dr. Thomas. All right, let's move down to the tentative budget. I want to talk briefly about the tentative budget as well. And of course, the board spent uh, quite a bit of time uh, listening to the tentative budget a week ago and uh, appreciate all of Ms. Uh, Huddleston's work on the tentative budget. We're, we're pleased at the, at the uh, as we start looking forward to the next school year about where we are in a, in a uh, financial standing. We feel like we're on solid ground. Our facilities needs, we've met a great number of our facility needs. We're gonna take care of the HVAC. Uh, we realize that Bate Middle School will need some work in three or four years and we're, we're working on our bonding process on that. And, but other than that, we're in really great shape facilities-wise. Uh, we're in great shape with our teaching staff, with, our, our, with the numbers that we have based on our student population. We're excited about the potential growth through, uh, as I mentioned earlier, our application for non-resident students to see some positive student growth. And uh, it, it's, it's, we're in a good position in the Animal Schools financially and looking forward to moving forward. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about teacher salary increases as well, and I, I think it'll take a commitment from the Board of Education. Uh, as everybody knows, we, we don't like to necessarily hear about a tax increase or anything like that, and uh, it may be good this fall that uh, perhaps the Board won't have to per se take a, take a tax increase for the 4%. I believe we're going to have a healthy property valuation this fall, and I think that that will maximize the amount of money that Danville Schools needs to bring in. I would certainly encourage the board that if it doesn't reach that full 4%, that you take the, uh, you be courageous and take the stand to do what we need to do to take care of our, our, our district. And that may be a slight, I don't think it's going to be a tax increase, I really don't. If so, it might be a slight one, but I would encourage you to have the courage to step forward and to make those strong decisions. As such, I'm happy to uh, um, uh, have the work that Ms. Huddleston's done putting that budget together and to uh, eventually encourage you to approve the tentative budget as we presented last week. And uh, we talked about some salary increases and I know the work of this board and I want to really say to our community because, you know, I've heard some things uh, that, uh, you know, about our, our board, but I want to tell you how much they care about our teachers and how much they care about our students and how much they care about our community. And uh, this board really held Ms. Huddleston and me to the fire and said, find out a way to make it happen for our teachers and for our staff. And uh, every one of them, and Mr. Stanfield as well. And uh, so uh, uh, Ms. Huddleston had a conference late in the week, and we're working some by text messages, by phone, but uh, we're pleased to, uh, to recommend a substantial increase to our uh, staff across the board. I would... Uh, I would say that um, uh, we would recommend that you approve the tentative budget. We've made some changes to that, and we would be happy to include a $1 per hour salary increase for all of our cooks 
instructional assistants, and bus drivers. This will represent between a 6 and 9% increase over their current pay, and we're happy to recommend a 5% increase based on feedback from the board across the board for all other classified and certified staff. You know, I know you all were here last week, and we were sitting <coughs> down about the 2 to 3%, and I know you all did not walk away from here with a lot of comfort in that. Uh, I was determined that we were going to do a lot better, and I promised that I would do and make sure we would do our best. And so, with the cooperation of Dr. Thomas, and he said, Mr. Becker, I squeak when it comes to spending money. And I said, I know, but we need to really do our staff right. Um, so, we talked, and I made the recommendation for the board that we go 5%. I thought he was going to die. So he's still with us. <laughs> but he assured me that it's the right thing to do. Um, it is the right thing to do. And um, I'm just proud of this board. I'm proud of our what we've been able to accomplish on our facilities, what we've been able to accomplish. And, We've not raised taxes in three years, and I'm hoping we're not going to do that again for a while. Um, but this board's great. So I applaud all of you. So we need a motion, please. I want to make a motion that we approve the 2022-23 tentative budget as presented, which includes the $1 per hour salary increase for cooks, instructional assistants, and bus drivers and a 5% increase across the board for all other classified and certified staff. I second that. So we have a motion and a second for the approval of the 22-23 tentative budget. As presented, including the dollar an hour salary <coughs> increase for our cooks, our IAs, and our bus drivers. This represents to them 6 to 9% increase. Now understanding they also do not get the 5%. They get the dollar an hour. Um, and then increase of over current pay and 5% increase across the board to all other classified and certified staff. So we have a motion and a second. All those in of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. And can I just say again, thank you so much. Like, I don't think anyone realizes the amount of time that's been spent on this for months. I mean, it's spreadsheets and research and conversations. Like, the amount of time that has been placed on Kim and Dr. Thomas has been insane. Like, they have truly been working hard for everybody. And, like, I just, I really, really, really appreciate both of you. Um, it's been a very stressful conversation that had to be, you know, had to be done. And I just, I really, really appreciate the amount of time that you guys spent. <laughs> Down from Bart Quaker. What kind of donuts do you guys like? Uh, they're, they're getting to. Uh, yeah. What do you think? Okay, let's move. <laughs> let's move on down to board policy 01421. It's our second reading. Uh, Dr. Thomas, will you just do this in summary? Sure. On uh, Board Policy 01.421, this is the one that regards public comment at our board meetings. This policy, as a second reading, will allow, just as we did, did every single meeting, anybody who wants to come and have three minutes at the uh, board chair's discretion will be able to talk to the board about any topic that is on the gen agenda, and uh, that's very appropriate. We expect our board to be ready at every board meeting about agenda topics and so if somebody wants to come up and address a topic on the agenda you're very well prepared for that. This also allows for an item that's not on the agenda to be presented to the superintendent or as it says uh, in the policy to the secretary which is the superintendent five days ahead so that way if anybody wants to talk about any topic whatsoever in front of the Board of Education they would just contact the superintendent get put on the agenda that gives the superintendent plenty of time, five days, to research and to provide information to the board so that you'll be aware when that person shows up to talk about that topic. You'll at least have some awareness of that topic with the board. It's a really good common policy across the Commonwealth, and I would recommend it for our second reading. 
they've come into question. So to clarify, if it's on the agenda and someone wants to comment on an item that's on the agenda, they can sign up when they get here before the meeting begins. Absolutely. Whereas if it's something that is not on the agenda, then they have to sign up five days in advance? They would notify the superintendent five days in advance. And they could do that by email? Via email. <coughs> uh, uh, there is a, um, a, a procedure that goes along with that that they would just simply fill out that procedure and talk about what the topic is and it gets submitted. And that's available on our website? It, it is. It's part of that policy. It's the okay. procedure that goes along with the policy. Yes. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Uh, what if a meeting agenda has not been sent out five days ahead of time? How would they know what things were not on the agenda? Well, I guess that that's something we probably will have to address. That's I'm a procrastinator. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the warning. <laughs> Typically speaking, if someone wants to talk about an agenda, or an item that's not on the agenda, then uh, it's going to be a non-common mm -hmm. agenda item. So, for example, I could, I, in my experience as superintendent, I've had someone who is a homeschool parent want to talk about their child uh, playing in the band. And so then they want to talk to the board and say, hey, I think as a taxpayer in this community, and I've got a child who's homeschooled, they should be in the band, that type of thing. That's not a very common occurrence on the agenda, okay. and so that would be something that we would, uh, would come across with that. I just wouldn't, I guess my concern is that the public doesn't know what's going to be on the agenda, and something goes on the agenda the day before that they really want to have comments on. Like, we can see. I, well, I if, it's on, if it's on the agenda, then they can show up at the meeting and speak on it. That's true. Yeah. Can we have a motion, please? I make a motion to approve the board policy 1.42. Second. As presented. Okay, we have a motion to second for the approval of board policy 1.421 as presented. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all. Okay, number nine is board policy, and this is first reading. <coughs> Dr. Thomas, can you just give us a summary on I'm that? I'm going to pass to Ms. Saturday. Oh, on this that's one. right. Sherry, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, sorry, the portal's taken. Yeah. It takes a minute when you take action on <laughs> reporting action. Um, but the policy you have uploaded is the required policy for a Title I district for parent and family engagement. And that is the policy that gets pushed down from KSBA. We have not done anything to that policy. That is what KSBA recommends. Um, and I left it that way on purpose because a survey is going to go out in the next week or so for feedback on that policy from parents, students, teachers, community members. Um, because part of our consolidated, if you remember last year, we went through the big consolidated monitoring audit of all of our federal programs. <coughs> this was one of the things, this is one of the last things we have to clean up is this district policy. We're good on all of our school policies and all of their parent family compacts and things like that. This is the last piece we have to clean up. So it really <coughs> truly is just a first reading of what KSBA pushes down. And then once we get feedback, I'll bring it back to you in June with suggested revisions. Okay. So this is not a, a voting item, this is just, just for you. If, if yeah, information, yeah, information yeah. for us. Okay. Okay. But I mean, if you have anything you want to talk about this, this is an opportunity. Okay. So does anybody have any comments or no. concerns? Okay. All right. So let's move on to the uh, student accident and cat catastrophic in injury insurance. So, Dr. Thomas. Okay, thank you. Um, so last week we had uh, Roberts Insurance present uh, the student accident and catastrophic insurance. My recommendation would be, be that we go with Roberts Insurance for that. First of all, uh, uh, their amount is at least a thousand dollars more or less, less than our current amount, which has a lot of limitations on it. 
Uh, I would recommend that we go with the higher amount, which is Plan 1. Plan 1 is 100% usual and customary for $32,076. This would cover all of our students in regards to their accidents. It would also allow us to have $7.5 million for all students on a catastrophic claim. And then lastly, I would recommend the $32,076 because it does not have a limit on physical therapy. As a board, you have an option of perhaps saving $3,000 by limiting this physical therapy. I'm just of the opinion the cost of things so much currently. I just think that uh, I don't. I, I would hate to limit one of our students if they need physical therapy to only $1,000 on that. Agree. So, and even that plan was still less than what Johnson. Paul it was still yeah. yeah. Both plans were less than than, than the current plan. And what 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 interest? Brought into the meeting was three three districts around here are using them. Well, 151 districts in the Commonwealth currently use Roberts Insurance for their student accident catastrophic insurance. I speak for myself. Yeah. Well, if I remember, we we had Roberts uh, <coughs> four years ago. Oh, okay. And the changing plans. Okay. Okay. So. Does anybody else have any questions or comments or concerns? No. Okay, we need a motion, please. A motion that we approve Robert's insurance at the vendor for student accident and catastrophic injury insurance coverage. Second. We have a motion and second for the approval of Robert's insurance as our vendor for student accident catastrophic injury insurance coverage. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Can I just clarify that that is the higher amount? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. The um, item number 11 is the uh, st student pupil attendance waiver for K-5 virtual academy. This is a similar uh, virtual performance waiver that we signed last year. The state uh, opened up K-4 virtual waiver due to the pandemic. They extended that. Uh, we currently already have a 612. We did include it in the waiver, but really we're looking at the K-5 because of the delivery. Whether we need it or not, we're just going to go ahead and do the waiver. Okay. Does everybody understand what we're doing? It's basically, we, we may have those folks that just need to be on virtual. Is that correct? Correct. Mm -hmm. And um, so we need to provide that for all of our kids. So can we have a motion, please? I make a motion to approve the SY23 pupil attendance waiver for K through 5 virtual academy. <coughs> so we have a motion to second for the approval of the pupil attendance waiver for K5 virtual academy. All those in favor of the waiver say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion Who carries. Mr. Speaker, who made the second? Oh, okay. Jennifer did. Thank Sorry. you. And let's move down to the program evaluation of gifted and talented. Uh, this is just a four-year information to this fall. No vote or anything. Um, a survey went out to staff and some parents too because some of our staff are parents of gifted and talented students. Um, also last week and I have compiled some of the findings of that survey here for you. Um, uh, at the beginning of the document, you see our 21-22 current state. So allocated wise, we had a 1.0 certified teacher slash coordinator that we staffed with a 0.69 retiree because there were no applicants that had the um, certification we needed or that we felt were qualified. Um, and the coordinating was absorbed at central office. Um, for school year 23, you have allocated a 1.0 certified teacher slash coordinator again, and we do at this time have qualified applicants. Okay. So that is good news. Um, you see there, there are two budgets there. The 130 um, should I is what um, the state gives us for GT. The next one should say 130X. Sorry about that. That's what you all budget. Most of it is tied up in salary and printers, and we pay for the assessments and any materials. Um, with the 0.69 uh, retiree <coughs> sitting, I linked the, the MUNIS reports there for you to look at if you want to look at those bottom lines. So um, we have a little left over there because that 0.69 retiree didn't cost as much money as 1.0 mm -hmm. certified teacher. 
Um, some of the community <coughs> partnerships that we've used this year are Art Center of the Bluegrass, Morton Center for the Arts, and Western Kentucky University for the stock market game. Um, there were two questions with open-ended questions after them on the survey. Um, did you feel like the gifted and talented needs of your students were met during the 21-22 school year? And you can see that it was an overwhelming 73% no. Um, and do you feel that we have adequate gifted and talented staff to service all of our students who are identified? And you can see that those numbers almost match on both those questions. Um, on the second page, I listed some of the overarching things that were in the comments. I took out any, I did the overarching things and then I of course did not include any comments that were counterproductive because some of them could be pretty, <laughs> Understand. You all have done surveys before, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you see that some of the pluses, the pluses are less than the deltas, but some of the pluses were multiple times. Um, a, a lot of people loved that the elementary students were pulled once a day if they were doubly identified in reading and math. They were pulled twice a day, four days a week, in grades four and five. Um, lots of good compliments on our AP and dual credit courses. Uh, lots of comments on our visual and performing arts field trips. Um, elementary students were more excited to go to their pull-out groups than the middle school students. Middle school students were only pulled one day a week on Fridays, and it seemed, based on the comments, it was, you could tell that the elementary students enjoyed it a little bit more than the middle school students. Because the elementary students were pulled during their workshop time, which would be the time for enrichment anyways, and middle school students were pulled during their elective. So if, they really wanted that year-long art class, then they missed it on Fridays. If they chose to go to GT, they didn't have to go. They could stay in their elective, but um, that's something we need to improve upon. Um, one of the um, comments about the teacher specifically, gifted and talented teacher challenged students daily in ways that I could not challenge them in my classroom. And I'm sure you all know Mr. Carney, and I'm sure you probably know that. Mm. Um, deltas, uh, not enough services for primary talent pool. Um, we, at this time this year, did not service primary talent pool. Um, not enough services for middle school and high school. Lack of professional development for classroom teachers on how to address the needs of gifted and talented students. Ensure that all subject areas identified are being addressed, not just what the teacher wants to teach. Um, there were some suggestions to add a community service component, an after school component. Um, services needed to start earlier. We had a hard time finding somebody, so services started later than normal. Um, and we need more staff to cover all grade levels. And some of the suggestions were having an elementary GT teacher and a secondary GT teacher, or having a teacher who teaches the academic areas and one who teaches the art areas, the visual and performing art areas. So, and then there are some goals list listed there that we will hire a 1.0 instead of a retiree this year. Um, we will increase gifted and talented services in high school by adding an interview slash mentoring component that will occur each quarter, which was actually Ms. Brosey's idea when she was in the role. Um, explore options for, for providing more gifted and talented services to both secondary students and students in the primary talent pool. Provide professional learning opportunities for classroom teachers that address providing for the needs of gifted and talented students in their classrooms. And we have already partnered with the University of Kentucky to be part of their next gen dual credit network um, program in order to provide more dual, more dual credit opportunities to our high school students. Good info. All right, good information. So, and that's just the beginning of it. It'll it'll expand a little bit, um, but that's where we were with that sir. We had 37 responses district-wide. Okay, great. Well, I guess the most people transfer in for this. So, is it feasible for the board to supply another position or half position for gifted <coughs> and talented? I, mean, I, I think anything feasible. We, we just need to, uh, seeing it's not been in our tentative budget as mm -hmm. we've talked about, uh, but it doesn't mean we can't add positions mm -hmm. as long as we know we can afford it to add the position. Sure. You know, we get a very small percentage of the uh, salary uh, compared to what we actually pay, which is fine. It's, mm -hmm. The board decided to make it a, a, a one point or, you know, uh, position. And so it is something we can definitely talk about. 
Right, just information. Yeah, I appreciate that, and, and that is, GT has been a concern of ours since we moved to the district. Um, and I, you know, uh, Ms. Brosey was hired shortly after we arrived, which was great. And that was a huge step for the district. Um, and then, of course, Mr. Carney doing what Mr. Carney does, um, being awesome. I just would like to see it expand more into secondary. So I think. There's a lot of really good opportunities there, and I hope the board can support that. Okay, well, we definitely will look into that and make some inquiries on budget-wise on what we Great. what we can do. Thank you. So, all right, Mr. Sadler, thank you for that report. All right, let's move down to the staffing report. On the staffing report, I do want to present the board. I Thanks, Dad. As a reminder, uh, the board is the only entity that can create positions for Danville Independent Schools and also the only entity that can abolish positions for Danville Independent Schools. We're in a really good position. Again, uh, a lot of good things done in legislation this year for schools, for public schools. And uh, part of that was the uh, funding that came became available for Friskies. And as such, we're asking for a little bit of assistance from the board. We've received uh, money. We, you all know we have great need, and our Friskies meet that need every single day. So what we're asking the board to do is to abolish our one eight-hour liaison position and then turn that around and create two six-hour Frisky liaison positions. This came straight from our Friskies, and so I would recommend that, that we meet their request of ending the one roll of eight hours and creating two six-hour rolls. So this is fiscally neutral? Uh, it, uh, the, it's fiscally neutral, yes, because we have received more frisky okay. funding. It makes this possible. Okay. Okay. Can we have a motion, please? I make a motion that we approve the abolishment of the eight-hour frisky liaison position and then create a two- or rather create uh, two six-hour frisky liaison positions. I second that. So we have a motion and a second for the approval of the abolishment of the eight-hour frisky liaison position and create two six-hour frisky liaison positions. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. This is how this information for the bank re reconciliation to your portal and um, you can see that we had about a hundred thousand dollars change in our cash balance total and the general fund um, from last year we are up around two million dollars in comparison and so you can see at the end um, that actually we balance out and we had a little more disbursements than we had coming in, but that was due to the cutoff date of the purchase orders being March 30th. So we're seeing all those payments coming in now, that having to pay those invoices. So um, at the end of our fiscal year, we have to roll over anything that's not paid, so we always try to make sure that we don't have anything left outstanding. Uh, I did send Mr. Ball the vendor report. I think I jumped up. ahead. Did you get that? Yes, ma'am. You loaded me up. Everybody I loaded fine. you up. That's all right. <laughs> um, a lot of those, like I said, invoices are from POs where we're trying to get through the end of the fiscal year. They had to plan ahead. So they're just pretty much routine. I, one thing I did want to point out, we had several um, transportation repairs, just trying to get the buses up and going. 
and keep them going. So again, I know we have talked about funding for buses for next year. So, um, and that's one of the reasons. We also had some repairs on the boiler at Hogsett. And other things, uh, uh, just routine monthly expenditures. The balance sheet was uploaded and you can see everything balanced out as far as our assets to our liabilities. And I included the monthly report of all the activities in the business office, including the receipts and expenditures. Our change in taxes was very minute just because we are at the point where we're 99 point percent, so we're not seeing a lot of change in that at this time of year. Questions? Okay, so we need approval of the uh, Financial report. Make a motion to approve the financial report as submitted. Second. So we have a motion and a second for the approval of the financial support as submitted. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. All right, payment of invoices. And those are some of the things that I had talked about was our gas bill at Atmos, we had quite a few. Amazon just gearing up for the end of the year. Um, you're going to see graduation expenditures, transportation repairs, all those type of things. Okay. Anything out of the ordinary? No, that is yeah, not. I'm looking through here, it looked all pretty. It, it was all pretty general this night. We're cutting dry. Okay, Mr. Ball, did you have any comments on that? No, everything's fine. Okay. Mr. Ball says they're fine, then I have to agree. They're fine. Does so anybody else have any comments or concerns? Dr. Okay. Thomas is not the only one that squeaks in our office. <laughs> <laughs> and, and we appreciate all the squeaks we can get. So we have that electric bill or the utilities one. That was, that was a big number. They are big numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Utility company, yes. yes. 34,000. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> it is a lot. But I mean, I'm sure each one yeah. of you have seen on your home all the utility bills, those have increased over the past year. And so we did try to figure that into our tentative budget going forth. For next year. I make a motion to approve the invoices as submitted. Second. So we have a motion and second for the approval of the invoices as submitted. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? The motion carries. Okay. We have the consent agenda items. Have you all, I know you all have taken a look at all of these. So we need a motion, please. I make a motion that we approve the consent agenda items as presented. Second. So we have a motion and a second for the approval of the consent agenda items as presented. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. And we now go down to item 15, which is adjournment. <laughs> I'll make a motion we adjourn this regular session meeting. I second that. So we have a motion and a second to adjourn this wonderful meeting. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carries. Thank you.